Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to explain and recap a recently released movie called We Have a Ghost. In the beginning, we see a house from which a few people were running scared in the middle of the night. One year after this incident, a real estate agent was showing this house to a Presley family where the house was in really bad shape. The agent was trying hard to spin this as a buyer's house, but it seemed something was odd. Frank liked this house, but his wife Milani was not sure about it. Frank's sons Kevin and Fulton too didn't like this and hoped Frank would change his mind. But Frank was in a tough position financially, he had his hand at different small businesses, which ended up with him losing more than he thought. Kevin was a moody type of boy who was fed up with Frank's unstable income and constant change of school and house. After a few days, the Presley family moves in here and they renovate the house. Kevin had an argument with Frank about all this as clearly. He didn't like this house. He saw his neighbor Joy playing trumpet and kind of liked it. He himself was into guitars. One night, while sleeping in his room, Kevin heard a voice coming from the attic. He went in to check out, but nothing was there. Soon a ghost appeared in front of him making weird gestures. Kevin didn't panic at all, rather he thought this was funny. He started recording this ghost on his mobile while laughing. Ghost soon left the attic in frustration. The next day, Kevin starts researching ghosts, entities, and other paranormal things. He befriends Joy who was his neighbor and was in the same class at school. The same day, the ghost again tries to scare Kevin, but this time also he fails. Kevin sat down with it and started chatting. He called him Ernest from the name on his shirt. Apparently, Ernest can't talk, he can only moan and scream. He didn't know who he was, how he got here, why he was here, and the way ahead. As these two were taking Kevin's brother Fulton barged in, he demanded his mobile from his. These two started arguing and a fight broke out. Ernest attacked Fulton, he threw him out, which scared him like hell. Kevin was happy about it even though it's a bad thing. Later that night, Kevin watched a video by 1DR. Monroe, who was giving a rational explanation for ghosts and souls. In the same video, Kevin saw an ad by one self-proclaimed medium called Judy Romano who clearly seemed like a con artist. The next day Fulton saw the ghost video on his phone and showed it to Frank. Initially, Frank didn't believe it but heck it was funny. Hence, he uploaded to YouTube with a catchy line. Meet Ernest a real-life ghost. But it didn't work. The video was a dud. Hence Frank and Fulton needed more of it to go viral. They started searching for Ernest in the attic, but he didn't appear. Later Kevin joined them with his guitar. As he sang Ernest appeared in front of him. As Frank started recording, Melanie walked right through Ernest and started asking them about the video. Frank asked her to turn back and as she saw Ernest she freaked out. Ernest too freaked out and ran directly into the wall. All this was captured on mobile. Soon, Frank uploaded it on YouTube and this time it went ballistic. It was instant viral. People started making a reel and TikTok videos out of it. Melanie was furious with the real estate agent as she didn't disclose the ghost even though she had heard about the rumors. She wanted to move out, but Frank stopped her. He said we have spent all our money renovating this house. We can't afford to move out. Besides this is a good opportunity for we can make money out of this ghost channel. Melanie didn't like this idea at all as she thought this was Frank's new scam business idea, but she was helpless. Soon Frank became viral news with many people flocking to his house to see Ernest. Dr. Monroe too saw this video and concluded this was significant evidence to prove ghosts. She was a CIA operative in charge of the paranormal division in the 80s which got cancelled by political pressure. She tried to contact her old boss Arnold Shipley about it but he threw her out. At school, Joy helps Kevin in finding about Ernest. His full name was Ernest Scheller. He had purchased the house back in 1965 and sold it in 1971. Apparently, there was no death record. 
Frank had arranged an exclusive interview with medium Judy Romano to make money. Ernest by nature was a soft, kind-hearted guy, but to make the interview explosive, he needed to act lit bit aggressively. Kevin showed him an old horror movie to reenact. Midway through the interview when Frank called Ernest, he entered in a dashing style. The room started shaking, the light flicked, and he attacked the production crew. Later, he opened his mouth, and a hand came out of it, which grabbed Judy. All this really scared Judy, as for the first time she had encountered a real ghost with powers. The interview was a disaster, they wanted a ghost, but got the conjuring. But the good thing was that the latest video got 6 million views in 30 seconds. Arnold Shipley now asks Dr. Monroe to head the investigation on this ghost nonsense. Back at the school, Joy hands Kevin an ID proof of Ernest Scheller, who used to live in his house. His death certificate is not there as he is still alive. Ghost Ernest's real name is not Ernest, but something else. Joy says Ernest used to own a bar in the town, which may give some clues as to who the ghost really is. She tells Kevin to take Ernest to that bar as he might be connected to that place. Kevin thought this was a good idea. Visiting known places might trigger suppressed memory. Finally, Joy meets Ernest and she was overwhelmed. Ernest tries going out for the first time in years, and yep, he goes out without a hiccup. Meanwhile, Dr. Monroe pays a visit to Frank and Melanie and explains her history. She warns them about entities like Ernest saying they harm sooner or later. She wanted to arrest Ernest for further study in a safe environment. Frank understood this and knocked her out of the house as Ernest was his milking cow. Ernest, Joy, and Kevin sneak out. Soon they were chased by fans. Kevin and Joy inquire with the present bar owner who shows them a photo. Ernest's photo was there on the wall as one of the guys who once owned that bar. Outside Ernest saw a little girl playing, and it triggered his memory. In the memory he saw a girl playing with him. In reality, the little girl got spoked and started screaming. She thought Ernest is attacking her. Soon Ernest became the villain as the media played this narrative. Frank was upset with Kevin taking out Ernest like this. He believed Ernest was the ticket out of his poverty, he wanted to milk this opportunity. Kevin argued with him so was Melanie. In all this CIA found an excuse and raided Frank's house. But Kevin and Ernest were not at the house, they already took off to Tulsa with Joy as Joy has found the real Ernest Scheller lives there. It was 400 miles from Kevin's house, they drove there in shifts. While on road, these guys stopped at a gas station where Kevin saw the news. In which CIA forced Frank to issue a statement saying Ernest had kidnapped Kevin and Joy. Kevin understood this as a boogie and as soon as headed out, two police officers tried to stop him and Joy. These two with Ernest's help escaped from them in a style fashion. Finally, they reached real Ernest Scheller's house. Mr. Ernest was some 80-plus-year-old man with a sick wife, Ramona. He started narrating a story. I have seen many weird things in life, but this is out on its own level. Ghost's name is Randy McGovern and his wife was Evelyn. She was Ramona's sister. She died in labor. One day Randy brought his four-year-old girl to our house and left. Police found his car in a yard sale and his watch in a pawn shop. He stole my driving license and shirt. I suspect his death was due to suicide. He drank to death. He can't remember anything because of this sin. Abandoning a four-year-old child. Randy and Kevin couldn't believe this, they always felt some kind of foul play. Mr. Ernest was in shock seeing Randy after 50 years. Just then CIA raided this house. They arrested Kevin and Joy. They made a special gun that would work on ghosts. How I don't know, but it did work. At CIA headquarters Randy was kept in a special cell. Since he was a ghost human rights laws don't apply. Arnold wanted to weaponize Randy, which rattled Dr. Monroe a little. Frank apologized to Kevin for behaving like a dustbag. 
He accepts his mistakes and promised him that he will improve, Randy slowly got his memory back. It was Ernest all along. Ernest killed Randy when he visited his house. Ernest's wife was desperate for kids. They tried all medical treatments, yet no success. On the advice of Ramona Ernest killed Randy and took his daughter June as their daughter. Ernest buried Randy's body in his shirt at Kevin's house, hoping he will keep it a secret for good. Randy was furious after remembering all this, he desperately tried breaking out. Dr. Monroe helped him this time. At Kevin's house, Ernest arrived to kill Kevin. As he exposed his dirty secret. Here Frank. Fulton and Kevin tried to stop him. But this old man was out for a kill. As soon Randy too arrived here and finally. He took his revenge. He killed Ernest. The next day Randy met his daughter June, who was older than him. Two had an emotional goodbye. Later Kevin too bid his farewell. Frank finally decided to move out of this house. Joy and Kevin started their relationship. With this, the movie ends. Overall, it's a great horror comedy movie with plenty of laughs. You will definitely enjoy it. For more videos like this, please visit my blog www.letmerecap.com. Thanks for watching. Take care.